Hello everyone and welcome to JFG tonight, a moment that we were uh, waiting for for a long time. Nick Frantes is back on Twitter. Uh, I've always kept a hope for this because I know that it was very important to Elon to be a free speech advocate, but as he realized himself, you can't be a you can't be an advocate for free speech and run run X and yet not let Nick Frontes back on it. Uh, if you if you want to claim that you've made an amnesty, and that's what people kept repeating to him. He probably received millions of messages at this point for since he owns Twitter, and they were right. You cannot uh, say that you are for free speech and you're in the U.S. Nick Frontes is in the U.S. Nick Frontes has not violated uh, the law in the U.S., and yet Elon was going around saying all that will get you banned from X is a violation of the law. That was absolutely false. And it's all about a random griper, apparently. Goya Bean Griper uh, just tweeted at Elon. Elon was discussing. Elon was discussing with about something else, Joshua, that had nothing to do. Someone told him, you work for the Jews. <laughs> Uh, and he quoted Nick Frontes saying, Hey, what does it say about our society that the cops let BLM touch our cities, but won't let students criticize Israel? It means Jews control America. That is the obvious conclusion. And Elon Musk answers, While I don't condone all the actions of any one group, I must admit to being openly fellow Semitic and generally try to see the good in all people. Amazing that uh, that it was in a discussion like this that the Goya Bean Groiper came in and said, bring back Nick Fuentes on Twitter. He has been banned since 2021. What happened to your promise, big guy? And uh, that was enough to convince Elon Musk. I guess he was tired. I've uh, hypothesized on my X account that perhaps the ADL has not paid their bill for this month. Perhaps, you know, Elon always does something with a reason. And it would be absolutely possible that they unsubscribed from some service, they stopped some money flow toward Elon, and he had enough and he pushed the Nick Fuentes button. Look at what he says in response to this. Very well, he will be reinstated provided he does not violate the law and let him be crushed by the comments and community notes. Now that's Elon going uh, a little bit. That's a nervous tweet. That's another one. Just like yesterday I was analyzing. <clears throat> that is a nervous tweet by Elon claiming that Nick Frontes will be crushed by the comments and community notes. I don't think Nick Frontes will be crushed by the comments and community notes. I think that Nick Frontes' arrival on X will re-motivate a lot of gripers to join X again. It will lead to a lot of mimetics. Uh, Pro-Israeli Zionist power is in shambles because <coughs> um, Nick Frontes is going to bring the contestation of Israel's action to a whole new level. And it was already bad for them. It was already not going very well with Elon Musk acquiring X and leaving that discussion open. Uh, naturally, people converge back toward having a critical stance against Israel. And now Elon Musk, in a way, kind of recognizing that now, with the whole revolution that's happening in our universities, what's so special about Nick Fuentes? Because at this point, you have the far leftist Democrats uh, taking over university buildings to contest the actions of Israel. So basically, the anti-Israel position has been regularized uh, at the cost of many lives, at the cost of, uh, <coughs> of the lives of people like me. Not that I died, but we have, uh, we have sacrificed our life to get to this point 
where we can talk against Israel's action and against Jews' uh, contribution to America critically. And in the current context, what's so special about Nick when you have the youth of our universities taking over buildings, uh, committing violence at times, committing trespass sometimes? Uh, it's a very regular position and it's being normalized. And as uh, was pointed out by Mark Gra Brahmin, the loss of irreproachable prestige that Jews once enjoyed in this country will be to them traumatic in the extreme and not something to which others who have not enjoyed this privileged status can relate. Suddenly from superhero to super zero, it's got to be tough. That's exactly what's happening right now. There is a complete loss uh, on the side of the pro-Israel lobby. I don't know what, they, what, what Elon has wrong with them, but something has happened. And it made Elon change his mind on Nick Fuentes. And again, in the nervous tweet, he says, it is better to have anti-whatever out in the open to be rebuted than grow simmering in the darkness. Those are liberal generalities. But he can't even say that Nick Fuentes is anti-Semitic. That's how weak uh, Elon's knowledge of Nick is. He doesn't even feel confident doing a critique. So I predict that within the next year or two, Nick Fuentes will have a major influence on discourse on the crowds of the internet and on the election that's coming. This is so awesome. I couldn't have wanted the 2024 to be as beautiful as this. Uh, couldn't dream of it, but it's happening. Nick Frontes will be back. I said, seems like Elon has serious mi misconceptions about what Nick Frontes stands for. Anyways, good thing that Elon has now kneeled. Nick will be reinstated despite Elon's need to dissociate from him overtly using this nervous tweet. The amnesty is headed toward completion. Don't forget Mark Collett, Laura, Pat Alternative, Patriot, Patriotic Alternative, uh, Jared Taylor. There, there's lots of, and uh, is it McDonald? Kevin McDonald is uh, also to be unbanned. But now that you have Nick Frontes, there's no reason to keep these other people banned. Uh, you have the most controversial figure of our generation. You can easily unban less, less controversial figures. I hope Elon Musk will do it. Uh, this is a game changer for the election. It's a game changer because <clears throat> uh, it, it complicates the thing for Donald Trump and his super Zionist approach is. Now there's going to be a voice in Nick Fuentes who's, who's, not, who's probably going to side with Trump, of course, but he's going to be able to push Trump toward the non-Zionist uh, direction. And this, uh, I can't wait to see it. Uh, Naberius says, annoying how rolling back censorship on X comes purely from luckily grabbing Elon's attention when he's in the liberal mood. That is a sad thing, that Elon couldn't go out of his own principle. And, you know, his own principle should have guided him toward this. His own displayed and claimed principles should have guided him toward this without a fucking rando uh, with a blue check mark uh, just coming to him. But you got to take what's given to you. And I take it. Uh, I think... It's going to be very interesting because Elon at some point might very well be faced with the... I think that Elon's perception is completely wrong. Nick Frontes is not going to get attacked in community nodes. They have no argument. And I would recommend... What, what I tell Nick Frontes right now, be careful. There will be lots of eyes on you. Check your facts. Don't make wild claims. Just... <clears throat> you're going to trigger people with basic claims. So you don't need to even go as far as things that you're uncertain about, like Israel did 9-11. You don't even need to go there. Just state facts and make them unassailable by community nodes. And that way, they, 
they will see what's happening that no it's not like elon says you're not going to be crushed because the left at some point gets tired of just saying oh well that's racist okay you can get someone saying this for a month a year they've been saying it now for a decade and they have nothing the only thing they have on their side is censorship they realized that they were losing debates with us back in 2016 2017. So the, the left is completely defeated on this front. The only thing that they got rolling for them is that they were successful at censoring the internet. So don't give them the branch to hit you with. Uh, don't be loose on your facts and use this opportunity to give glory to your political view. Stephen Robinson says, Jeff, if the ICC arrests BB, do you think the dots will be connected to 9-11? That is such a wild speculation. I don't see the ICC arresting anyone. Uh, certainly not BB Netanyahu. Uh, you know, the ICC has no standing. Uh, the ICC has no ability to execute an arrest warrant against uh, someone as powerful as Bibi Netanyahu. Now, even if his power is flailing, with, with comparison to the last few years and decades, his power is diminishing because he lost, uh, the, he lost the public campaign for support. He lost the, the position for, image, image, uh, for, for, for his image. He lost the PR battle on his actions in Gaza. It was a disparate action, probably because he knew that he would lose the PR battle, and probably because the Jews are extremely afraid of the coming generation. The coming generation <clears throat> will be more anti-Zionist than any generation preceding in the U.S. And as Mark Bramin was pointing out, it's going to be very hard for them because intellectual Jews I've realized uh, across the years studying them, talking to them, and at times listening to them, I've realized that they, they truly have a double standard. That they, they live with this bias for their ethnicity, and it, it's not going to be easy to be put back to be like the mold that gets whacked back to equality with everyone. They're really going to experience it as as damage to them. They're going to experience it as an aggression. Uh, just the fact that we won't join them in their genocidal campaigns, just the fact that people like Joe Biden even are starting to see <coughs> that the base of the Democrat Party will not be maintainable if he goes too much on the side of Bibi Netanyahu. Now it's just starting. In 20 years from now, we won't just have a Joe Biden kind of warmish, you know, between hot and cold, not saying anything about Bibi Netanyahu, but also not supporting him. Uh, in 20 years from now, it will be, you have, to, you have to put Bibi Netanyahu back in his place or you won't have a position in the Democrat Party because no matter how much money the Jews want to throw at buying out politicians, at some point the voter base will just be such a, you have to either choose Zionism or you lose the election. It's going to be that way. Uh, see, APAC is trying to push my, I, I'm wondering if this news item has something to do with Elon Musk deciding in a direction because APAC halts funding for 15 Republican lawmakers after a refusal to vote in favor for the $14 billion in Israel aid. Israel aid. So we have uh, a part of the political class that is dissociating themselves from Jewish power. And at this point, they're like, okay, we, it's good money, but we're, we're going to have to say no because we don't have a political career if we continue in that direction. And somehow it's possible that Elon Musk has made a turn realizing that there was no future that is, uh, that is irrationally Zionist. 
that he can continue going around and saying, oh, I love the Jews, oh, I, I'm a philo Semite. He can continue going around saying this, but it has to stop there. If you shut down the voices of opposition to Israel's action, if you shut down those people who are critical of Jews in America, you are on the side of, you'll go on the wrong side of history. And people are noting this is certainly linked in some form to the action we've seen from Elon. Alex Jones. Alex Jones also recently made quite a wild repositioning. I mean, <clears throat> he's going to tell you that it's not a repositioning. He's going to tell you that he's always been telling the Jews to deal with their own problem. But to be saying it with such voice and such intensity, I think that the dynamic here is changing. Listen to this. Demand Benjamin Netanyahu take 20 Palestinians in his house. So he's saying Israel should welcome the refugees that they cause. That is a far right talking point. It's often the thought experiment that we propose to show the double standard of Jewish intellectualism, with, which tells you, oh, uh, Western civilization must welcome all of these refugees. And yet, Israel's action in the Middle East keep making the Middle East unstable, keep making it such that there are more refugees. So how about Israel deals with the problem that they cause? And I demand his candy-ass son in Miami suit up in body armor and go to Gaza and fight these people or get the hell out of my world. <laughs> and if Benjamin Netanyahu is not willing to send his own child to die for Israel in the Middle East, uh, Alex Jones is saying, leave us alone. Get out of my world. Leave us alone. Uh, and deal with your own problems. I, I never knew we would get there in 2024. A reinstatement of Nick Fuentes. Alex Jones is saying, deal with your own problems to Israel. It's looking good. It's looking like a year of victory, just like 2023 was. And I don't say that because I hate Jews. I say that because I'm not a toilet bowl you sit on and shit on. I'm not here to eat your fucking shit. You fucking got that. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, the snowballing is incredible. Snow, John. Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.